Hi guys! It's been forever. I'm Jody from Unconventional Cross Stitch and I haven't done a floss tube in months, definitely months, but long overdue. Uh, and the whole reason I got inspired to get off my bum and do this video is because I got a new toy and it was the Lowry Stand! So, um, for those who have been watching for a long time, uh, I've had a total left hip replacement already and I need to do the right. And recently I have found that the current frame I've got isn't isn't great for me. I'm getting a bit of hip pain from it. And then I find it quite awkward as well to get up and off the couch because, well, my butt spends a lot of time in this one particular spot of the couch, so it's kind of got a bum groove. So I thought it was time to look at other ways of doing things and I saved up and I got the Lowry stand. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, full disclosure, um, I haven't been paid for this video, um, this is my honest opinion, I'm going to go over my previous stand that is practically handmade by hubby and my Lowry stand, but I'm not a professional blogger, um, my, my facilities are pretty limited, I don't have any fancy lighting or um, green screening or anything like that, so the quality is not going to be professional, but I hope you actually you still get something out of it. So, without further ado and any more blah blahing, this is the stand I was using. So my legs would go over this on the seat and that's what would hold it in place. And then you've got the main bar with holes here, so that would decide my height. So Hubby drilled lots and lots of holes for me so I had lots of choice and as you can tell I only ever used two. And then this is the movable arm, so you can tell, this is the only original piece left from this frame. I've had this since I was, gosh, maybe 18 or early 20s. So I've had this over a decade and it's had a flogging. Wood doesn't obviously last, it wears and tears, especially when you've got metal fittings on it. Um, so it, it's been through the wars. This is my only original piece left. But as you can see, I mean, if you pause this video, you could replicate it if you wanted to, and if this was something that you wanted to do. Um, Hubby even signed the bottom, isn't that cute? Um, but problems I had was that this part used to twist, but we've glued it and locked it in and those sorts of things. So that's what I had, and then my scroll frame attached to this part. And it was pretty easy just to release this lock and you twist and so that's what I had and then I'd have to sort of slide it out from under me and put it on a chair to get it out of the couch so yeah pretty awkward so that's what I had yesterday my Lowry stand came um I wasn't entirely sure how to feel like he's upset at me this is Mitch and he can hear his brothers, sisters, mum and dad outside. And I haven't put him outside today because he was a bit rude yesterday. So if you want to go, go my love. Come on, off you go. And he's off. There we go. He's gone to see mum and dad. Anyway, <laughs> I'm so easily distracted. Uh, so yeah, I got my Larry Sand and I think um, the unboxing experience wasn't fabulous. Um, the, it was sent in the Lowry stand box and it came in like the actual box was fairly okay but once I opened it I actually found that all the packaging had already been opened and it looked like maybe it's already been used so yeah I'm, I'm not too sure about that but anyway I've built it um, to give it a test run anyway uh, got it together no worries so without further ado let's start off with the clamp now keep in mind Everything in the Lowry stand is metal, so it's, well, I can lift that one-handed. So it's heavy, but it's not heavy. I reckon actually the clamp's one of the heaviest parts. So this is my clamp. That's holding onto my wood scroll frame. As you can see, so I'll build it all for you anyway, but everything's like easy lock. It's just like little twist motions. And this, this little bivalaki, this doesn't come out. So <clears throat> even if the kids decide to take the liberty of trying to play with it, they can't. So see how easy that was to take it off? And then I just... <laughs> it's a bit awkward for me trying to show. And then I just... 
twist that like so and it's locked on again so when I'm cross stitching I can decide where I want that bar I don't want it to stick out into where I'm cross stitching oh it's upside down but you know hypothetically you see what I'm going with so it's quite heavy but you don't notice the weight uh, because it's all locked in together with the stand so that we've got that oh, my washing's beeping at me now can you hear that I'm ignoring the washing I'm sure everyone can relate let's ignore the washing I'm not hanging that out now I'm making a video so we've got that so this is the part that you use to twist look at my ugly back don't look at my back <laughs> everyone else has gorgeous backsides and mine's just chaos absolutely organized chaos um, so without further ado I'm gonna scoot out and hope that my poor camera can keep up with me I'll pop that down and I'll show you the base so I haven't taken any of the, the sticky stuff off yet, but that's the base. Locks in at the bottom with a, what would you call it? I call it an Allen key. Okay, and then here, I hope you can see this. Let's just pop this up here, there we go. So it's got all these holes so that you can decide what height you want to stitch from. So it's got a little locking pin and I'm probably not gonna be, there we go. I can pull out this locking pin and hope I don't No, I've got it tied up and then you can decide at what point you want it to be now I was sort of like what's the where did I put this should maybe go down here I'll put it down here for now I was sort of like what's the point in this locking pin because I'll move it down a level so that you can see there we go it's got this little lever here so when I lock it I mean that's it hitting the locking pin but if I wanted it up higher and I lock it it's there anyway but I realized that when I want to swing it out to get off the couch I'm going to need to unlock it and then twist it see how easy that twists and I can tell you now it twists that easy even with the frame on um, so let's just lock that back so the base plates quite heavy and it's a good length so this base plate sits under my couch oh it's raining I'm excited I haven't had rain in ages um, just as I fill up the pool too rude uh, but yeah this base plate is really heavy but not heavy enough that with the frame on I can twist it around to face the opposite way it overbalances it the, the frame weighs too much so but yeah I found this really good and even if I don't unlock the top I can still just twist it around so I'm gonna get some felt pads and attach it to the bottom of my frame so I don't damage my tile and then it just makes the twisting and turning a bit easier so I don't have to unlock it all the time because I'm a lazy besom. Minimum effort is perfect for me when I stitch. The faster I stitch the better. I love seeing results fast and for those of you who have seen my 12 minutes of stitching uh, I'm really there going bah! as fast as I can. So yeah so let's put it together with the frame just so I can show you so please forgive me if this I'm in my work clothes too I love black and I never wear anything nice because I get resin and all sorts all over it so we'll just use this chair as the example but it's probably going to overbalance I'll put some paper on it to try and help because it's not sitting underneath my couch all right so demonstration let's hope I don't screw it up Tighten, done. It's on there. How easy is that? And then I'll, maybe I'll turn around the other side. Pardon me, wedgie. There we go, that's a bit better. So, unlock it, turn it, lock it. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Time to look it back, unlock, turn. Fix up back, unlock, turn. Lock it up again. Oh, I don't like the height. Unlock, lift, lock, done. Change where the locking pin is though. Because I think if anything was to wear out, it would be this little piece of plastic for the locking pin. And I'm not even sure whether it's meant to go back on there. Not entirely sure. I probably should have read the instructions a bit more. But anyway. So it can go height wise, how high up can I go before it says no, 
don't think I can really comfortably go any further than that without without it maybe popping out the top but that's quite a good height it's just uh, it's a good height for my couch um, for those of you who've <laughs> hey Midge hi bud not on the cross stitch please um, yeah so it's a pretty good height for my couch the I think you call this part the crossbar the bit that goes across the couch is just long enough but I think I'm still going to look at getting the extender bar for those more awkward projects because I have quite some quite large frames. I've got some big ones. So I'm just going to slide that actually. And you know, I reckon I could actually cross stitch from here because my desk, let's see if we can do this. My desk has a set of drawers that I can slide this under. It's just still upside down I'll fix that later so let's just let's have a go Ooh! <laughs> can you tell I'm still figuring this out and now I have a bird in my head I hope he doesn't poo on me all right let's just fit I didn't say do that Ooh. so it's struggling a bit with the angle let's push you under further you know I could technically get away with cross stitching in this chair please don't poo on me oh I think you already have have you? <laughs> Isn't he lovely? Okay. Mwah. Up on the chair. Oh, that'll do. Yeah, so I reckon I could technically cross stitch from here, and that's something I would have really liked to have done for quite some time. It means I don't have to use my digital SLR to do my 12 minutes of stitching, and I can live stream. So that's actually got me really excited because, yeah, with the right camera angle, you'll be able to watch me go, which is awesome. So, um, I hope that's answered your questions about the Lowry. Um, if I haven't covered anything, let me know. Um, so, I've given you an overview of two, two different frames. Um, a lot of people have asked me about the lap frame and where it came from. Um, it came from the Fox collection, I think over a decade ago and when it first came to replacing parts I tried to find it again I couldn't find it nowhere seems to do it anymore but it was pretty quick and easy for hubby to make it's just pieces of wood really with some holes drilled in so I'd actually recommend making your own because then it's really custom um, but as far as the Lowry sand goes it was absolutely worth every dollar that I spent on it the quality is really good um, it's going to do the job I need it to do and it's made stitching a bit more exciting I'd say because it's easier it's more fluid I'm not I'm not awkward anymore trying to get on and off the couch and I think it actually saves space too I can keep my floss boxes a bit closer to me so um, yeah so I just disconnect the clamp part and store it on my little side table for the in-between because um, it's too heavy to go the other way around it overbalances so yeah I can leave this entirely constructed I guess um, before I show you my work in progress because I always do that I'll put it down as low as it will go just so you can see but I mean it's so easy to put together you could probably put this in I'd say like a brain fade any bag really it would fit in a backpack even it's so easy <laughs> And you can put it together in seconds so there you go that's it shrunk down that's it untwist it done weight wise I'm not sure I don't know what it weighs but I mean I'm not very strong anymore especially in my hands and I can do it so I'd say anyone can really do it and carry it around in a backpack you wouldn't notice it so compact lovely everything I've ever wanted pardon me in in a frame and it comes well you can get additional accessories uh, the place I got mine from didn't have any at the time so and I didn't think I needed any I was like I really want to start off with just the base like the basic model I guess you'd call it no no frills attached before going hardcore on accessories I just wanted to know what I actually needed I don't like having stuff I don't really need hello beautiful boy Mwah. Go exploring. Come on. So, uh, without further ado, my work in progress. He's off again. His skull. Skull had a bit of a rough patch, and 
I got positioning on the page wrong. So I'm a left to right or right to left girl. I, I don't like going up and down. But because I was cutting it kind of fine on my fabric, I was like, oh, I'll go down. I'll go top to bottom and then do like an L and just make sure. But instead I went down and only went across two pages out of, I think, five. And then went, oh, yeah, I'm all good. And then realized... I was misaligned by how many do you reckon? It wasn't a huge misalignment. I'd say one, two, three, four, five, six. So actually, yeah, it was pretty misaligned. I'd gone six out. So if I had kept the pages I had originally stitched on this naked, I always get the video wrong <laughs> on this part. Um, it would have been really misaligned. The teeth would have been all up here and it wouldn't have, I, I couldn't have saved it if I wanted to. So I ripped two pages worth of teeth on this guy. Really sad. Really, really sad. It was a long, it took me hours too to rip it out. Oh, horrible. But I got it done, I got over it, um, and I'm back at it. So I'm now on the third last page. This is my last full page that I'm working on here. And then I've just got some teeth and an itty bitty bit of teeth up here. And I'm done. I'm done. How good does he look? I love it. So I can't wait to frame him. He's looking really funky licious. I'm very happy with him. What will I do when I finish this guy? Um, I'm going to go back to nostalgia. I really want to get that one finished. It's just sitting there and then I get paranoid about them getting dirty and you know what it's like. You just want to finish a project. So I want to finish that one. I'll, but I'll do it for a couple of months and then I might swap out to my little witch owl. I'm really feeling that one at the moment. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know where I'm going with it, but we'll see. Um, other than that, what else has been happening? Not a lot. Um, using the new shipping boxes has been on the mark. Like, I haven't had a single damaged box yet. Crossing my fingers. Can I touch wood? There we go. I'm touching wood. <laughs> but yeah, not a single damaged box. So it's really been worth it. I'm really happy with it. If you're curious to know what they look like, these are my little boxes. And they hold the... I still put the bubble wrap mailer in there just for an extra bit of sponge because I don't know what shipping companies do to them, but they're not kind at all. So yeah, that's what I send internationally. Um, domestically, it's still just the bubble mailer because I'm not having any damage issues locally. So something between export and import for the, the destination country, I don't know what happens, but something goes on. and. We had a couple in other countries, but it was predominantly America where we were having the issues. So we did the right thing and we changed. So yeah, that's going well. Um, website. Website's doing well. I'm trying to think of what's changed. We're still doing the loyalty program. So that's, that's not new. But what we do have that's new is we're trying something new. And I've been wanting to do it for years, but it's a pattern subscription. So you pay $50 a month. It comes out automatically from PayPal. And you get access to three of my own designs and three of our artist designs each month. And they'll change out each month. So I add them to a special folder and once you've signed up for membership those patterns show up as zero dollars and then it's just as easy as popping them in your cart and checking them out. We do it that way because file sharing not everyone knows how to use and it can get complicated and once I change out those files you can't access them anymore. So we've got that issue. And then if I email them, I'm relying on your email not sending that folder to junk. We're restricted on how big a file I can send over email and if you lose that email you lose your files so it's complicated so doing it this way means that you can always access your patterns you can re-download them whenever you need it's a real good paper trail for you to have so we decided to do it that way now out of those six as well each month we're going to do a special one and it'll be one that you get before anybody else so 
you'll get it a month before. Once we swap out the patterns, that's when I'll add it to the normal catalogue, but for that month, you're going to be able to have that pattern and no one else will. So that's really cool. So there's lots of cool aspects, and then I also automatically add you to the 20% loyalty level, which is the highest you can go. So there's lots and lots of bonuses to be doing it. So do pop on. I'll put the link in the description for where to go, and you can have a look there. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. So if you are working on any of my stuff, I'd love to be tagged um, in, what would you call it? Yeah, I guess just tagging, tag me in it. Uh, I love seeing people working on stuff and, and seeing them all come to life. So that's where we're at. We had our um, Stitchathon event in March. I want to say March, but part of me is April. It was April. Anyway, we had one and it was a real lot of fun. Like a lot of people enjoyed it. There was a lot of smack talk going on, lots of friendly Atlanta. So it worked really well. So we're having another. The next one begins in June. Have a look at the event schedule. It's um, in our group, Unconventional Cross Stitch Facebook group. So you can find it there and join in. It's a lot of fun and last time we did a tote bag, this time we're doing a mug. So there's a really cool first prize and we're doing mini events each week leading up to the main event and each time I'll pick someone and they get five bucks to spend on the website. So you know why not? Let's go for it. Like participate. You can do as many events or as few as you like. If you don't want to do the mini events don't do them. If you want to do just the mini events and not the main event that's cool. If you just want to do the main event that's cool. Like it's really like like there's, there's very few rules. Like it's all about as long as you're having fun. That's our main aim is for you to guys to have a lot of fun and enjoy doing it. So yeah, check that out. Uh, what else can I mention? Oh, um, I'd also like to mention Carla and Leo's uh, Halloween sale. So each year they do a Halloween sale and I've been sort of Facebook stalking this event for years. I'm just going to say years because I can't put an actual year mark on there ever since I was friends with Carla so that's a long time too so they do a Halloween sale and I've been watching and watching and watching and I love seeing everything come together and the patterns and like it's, it looks like a lot of fun everybody has fun in that one um, but this year I got to be an artist Woo! so this year like you can do one of my works so I've been working really hard on doing some smaller pieces for the sale so that it ties in a bit more with that because a lot of my works can be quite big so we're doing lots of little ones so we've got what have we got one person's doing zombie shake um, my latest ones are the little trick-or-treat Halloween kitties I've got two of those I could do more but we'll see how they go whether people like them or not so we'll do a couple of others um, just lots of fun bits and pieces so yeah I'm really looking forward to that which one I'm going to do for that event is still up in the air so I think I'll leave it till pretty late before I pick as long as I've got fabric for it so I maybe shouldn't leave it too late yeah not too late definitely don't I'm a last minute kind of girl when it comes to project planning I'm pretty awful and then I want it now instant gratification uh, yeah so that's where we're at I kind of blend into this chair don't I since it's black and I'm wearing black and oh I'm all I'm all out of sorts aren't I this is my least favorite shirt because it's got this massive neck on it so I always end up like exposing a bra strap here or there not very dignified so I should probably stop blah blaring I've been going for how long now do I even get a timer on here is there any timer no idea I don't know I've been blah blaring for too long anyway so I hope you enjoyed my video and my review of the stands as well as like where I'm up to on my project and what we've got going on in the world of unconventional cross stitch uh, if you've got any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Uh, until next time, catch you on the flip side and happy stitching guys.